Okay, we have an important session. The topic is development strategies for competitive swimming in India to be conducted by Mr. Monal Choksi. Mr. Monal Choksi is Secretary General of Swimming Federation of India since May 2019. And he was responsible for the much appreciated planning and conduct of the 10th Asian Age Group Swimming Championship at Bangalore. As a proud ex-swim parent, his association with this sport is for more than 18 years. He is well aware of multiple segments of swimming arenas, and that's why he brings fresh ideas and new direction to SFI. By profession, he is an industrialist, and it will be a delight to hear him today. Good morning, sir. Uh, you can start. Good morning, Father. Thank you very much. Your voice was cracking, so in case my crack uh, is not very clear, please do uh, let me know. Since you are unmuted, you could probably... Just no, your me. voice is good. Partha's voice was cracking. Your voice is great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, today's session on uh, development strategies for competitive swimming in India. Uh, at the beginning, uh, let me place on record my sincere thanks to Mr. Pradhan, the DG of Sports Authority of India, for his support, not only for this session, but to the Swimming Federation of India. And I would also like to acknowledge the support and guidance I received from my mentor, Sri Virendra Vai Nanavati. Uh, his uh, depth of experience in administrating of sport federations uh, is a huge uh, support to uh, navigate the challenges as the secretary, current secretary of the Swimming Federation of India. So uh, a bit about uh, SFI, I'm sure you all know, but uh, SFI is the apex uh, governing body for six aquatic sports in India and is recognized by the government of India as well as the Indian Olympic Association, besides the international body FINA and the Asian Federation. Uh, the six disciplines are swimming, artistic swimming, diving, high diving, water polo, open water, and masters. And of course, strategies for each discipline are bound to be different. And therefore, uh, today's session will be dealing with only the strategies related to developing swimming. It is also noteworthy to say that swimming is the sport, the only sport with the highest number of medals at the Olympics. To, to create any strategy and to know where we are going, it is uh, also necessary to know where we have coming from. So just to set the perspective, ever since the Olympic movement started, swimming has been the sport uh, in the, at the Olympics. And since 1900 till about 2016, uh, though India has fared decently well, uh, I wouldn't say extremely well, uh, with a total 28 medals up to 2016 at the Olympics. So in a history of almost 116 years. Similarly, a little closer to home, uh, at the Asian Games, which started in 1951 up to 2018, uh, which is close to about 70 years, uh, India has had a better success uh, with 600 plus uh, medals in various sports. And uh, once again, uh, saddens me to say that uh, uh, Indian swimming has only seven individual medals since 1951. So clearly, uh, uh, it's not a wonder that uh, swimming is not getting the respect that uh, it should from uh, our sports fans, uh, our government, etc. So this prompts me to repeat the famous quote, which I quoted earlier by Albert Einstein. I shall uh, take the opportunity to repeat it again. And Albert Einstein once said that if you do what you always did, you will get what you always got. It's a very simple statement, but says a lot. I'm sure all of you agree with this statement. Uh, I just would like to differ slightly from Einstein in this particular case. And I would, if we do what we always did, we will get what we always got. 
the reason why we say we is that sports, any sports discipline is a complete ecosystem. If there is to be any strategy to be implemented, any change of direction, it is not a singular role of one person, one federation, but it is the role of the entire ecosystem to navigate the new path. A little bit, little bit of background on the current scenario vis-a-vis -vis, uh, our particular sport and uh, sports in general. So India has, uh, and the Indian government has definitely recognized that sports is a soft power when it comes to global diplomacy. And therefore, there is a lot of impetus on developing sports, out of which uh, 14 Olympic sports have been decided by the government to be in the priority category. And we are glad that swimming is one of them. Uh, currently, the government uh, provides a lot of support directly to the federations, to the athletes, and uh, in creating infrastructure. Particularly, there are two schemes which they operate, the two verticals, which they call the Olympic Podium Scheme, which is TOPS, and the Kelo India Talent Identification and Development Program. Uh, so if you look at it, TOPS is basically sharpening the tip of the spear. It is meant for our elite athletes, and it's virtually uh, a carte blanche for them to uh, improve whatever they need in terms of equipment, foreign exposure is available to them through TOPS. And Kelo India deals with uh, larger participation at the bottom of the pyramid, and not only that, it also provides uh, opportunity to train in a slightly more in, um, challenging environments and uh, professional environments under the Kelo India academies, which are private as well as government run. The reason to mention this here is that uh, any strategy we create in a sport like swimming, which does not have a lot of money, has to lean on the schemes provided by the government. And if we were to move forward fast, we have to adapt ourselves and we have to learn how we can maximum and optimize the benefits to our athletes, coaches, etc., and the sport in general from this type of schemes that the government offers. So let me spend a little time to talk about the vision of the Swimming Federation of India. Uh, basically, the Swimming Federation of India as you know, athletic sport through development of swimmers and coaches. These are the key components if we wish to uh, see glory in the future. And therefore, the vision has to encompass the two crucial elements, that is our swimmers and coaches, to help them achieve their fullest potential. Not necessarily everybody will be an Olympic champion, but we have to work towards exploiting or helping our athletes to achieve their fullest potential towards their journey to the highest goals of winning medals. And we hope that we shall, in the very near future, be hitting those goals of winning medals at the Olympic and World Championships. But not only that, sports also helps in inculcating the spirit of sportsmanship. So uh, as SFI, our vision says that irrespective of whether you are a champion or not, you have to play the sport in the spirit of championship and teamwork. It helps to build uh, our, our nation's youth. Being more specific, our mission, so our mission is to build a strong foundation and focusing on talent identification at the grassroots. We have to proactively work towards increasing participation at the sport, in the sport at district level, through our state units, partnering with various stakeholders, uh, bringing schools closer to the sport and various academies. And we have to work on a long-term athlete development plan. So. Uh, though a vision encompasses uh, many, many years and uh, sometimes even decades, the current context is for the two next two Olympic cycles. And uh, therefore, we need to focus on our junior and elite levels to uh, achieve our mission. So if you look at the pyramid and earlier speakers have talked about the various levels uh, starting bottom up towards an athlete uh, becoming a senior and elite athlete. 
as a strategy uh, for any fav strategy to work and to have favorable and sustainable outcomes in the medium to long term, we have to formulate a strategy that addresses the unique requirements of each section of this pyramid. And moving forward, I'll explain what we have in mind. Uh, But before we do that, for any strategy building uh, to be realistic, we have to do a SWOT analysis, as it is called, uh, which is basically strength, weaknesses, threats, and opportunities. Uh, without realistically mapping our SWOT, uh, any plans that we make may not really be very realistic and may not fructify. So. If I start dealing with the threats, basically, the, globally, the sport of swimming is getting faster. And the gap between our best performances, Indian best performances, and the swimmers across the world will keep widening unless we you know, act at uh, uh, a very urgent and very specific manner. Another threat is that uh, glamorous sports like cricket, soccer, badminton, tennis will keep drawing the youth towards those sports. And uh, unless and until swimming also starts falling into that category, uh, we might not have too many people entering the sport at the bottom of the pyramid. Obviously, media and glamour will increasingly follow popular sports. And therefore, all the more reason to work on the popularity, visibility of our sport and ensure that our events are uh, you know, attractive for spectators, attractive for the media, and create linkages with media so that our sport can be uh, more visible and we create glamour around the sport. Aquatic sport is not considered a favorable alternative to career, which is, has been discussed with by other speakers also, but it certainly uh, falls in the category of a threat. And uh, we have limited influence on that till uh, the sport becomes a lucrative career opportunity, both in terms of participation coaching or sports management. Participation will continue to keep drop, dropping until an Indian hero breaks the glass ceiling. As has happened in every sport, it only takes one person to break the glass ceiling. And then that task and that milestone seems easy. And it motivates so many more to try and break the next glass ceiling. Therefore, uh, we certainly need our heroes to break the glass ceiling and we have to glorify, we have to celebrate our heroes and we have to make them more visible to the uh, bottom of the pyramid. They do have a role and responsibility in that area and as SFI, we will certainly call upon our heroes to help uh, popularize the sport. If I come to weaknesses, uh, lack of domestic competition for racing exposure is certainly a very big weakness and we have to work towards increasing the racing exposure both at junior and senior levels. Uh, very few or less foreign competition exposures for the high performance group. Barely do they manage to uh, go out to race uh, once or twice and that happens in Singapore and Malaysia uh, where most of our swimmers go to. But we need a more structured and organized manner in which we can uh, expose our athletes to foreign competition. Talk about that more later. The uh, uh, discouraging and uh, we cannot remain pessimistic about it. We have to be optimistic and we need to work on concrete steps to increase participation and retention uh, uh, in the girls and women's categories so that that group can also be a strong contender as we move forward. Lack of coach education for long-term athlete development. Uh, this is certainly an area of concern. Uh, we got the opportunity to kick off a education series like this uh, uh, because of uh, SAI as well as the uh, unique circumstances arising out of COVID. But this is not just because of that. This has been in the plan for uh, some months now, and uh, it will be continuing in future. We will talk about that later. Once again, uh, idealization of local heroes, whatever may be their performances, but they are the, they are the best that we have. 
And uh, as we talk more, we, some of our uh, swimmers have done extremely well and are placed pretty well uh, internationally as well. So we should celebrate our heroes and uh, uh, make sure that they do not uh, continue to, you know, hide behind a, a curtain or uh, the visibility. Uh, retention uh, has been talked about, low retention from age group to senior level. This is certainly an area of concern. Uh, it has been discussed at personally with uh, Sai in our, many of our meetings, but it is not a phenomena that is true to India alone. Uh, in this presentation, I do not have the time to share the slide, but uh, you might be surprised to know that uh, USA swimming also faces a huge retention issue. The number of athletes uh, retain, uh, continuing with the sport up to senior level from the Learn to Swim programs is very low in the US as well. It does not matter, participation number is very huge. So we cannot uh, expect that the retention levels may rise to uh, fantastic levels, but we should certainly ensure that there is a very high participation at the bottom of the pyramid. So the retention uh, issue is not so much of a concern. If we move to uh, strengths, and certainly this is very encouraging. Uh, we have six swimmers with a B qualifying time for the 2020 Olympics, which is now the 2021 Olympics. Uh, this is probably the first time that we have six swimmers uh, who are qualifying with a B time. And not only that, four of them are still 21 years old. So that is a very encouraging sign. And uh, moving to 2024 and 2028, I'm sure we have a lot of opportunities to develop these youngsters. Uh, out of these two swimmers are extremely close to the A qualification time. Probably this is the first time, once again, that uh, swimmers are in microseconds away from the A qualifying time. Uh, a lot of you may not know this, but uh, this is certainly uh, a very encouraging fact that five swimmers in the under, uh, from India are in the under 18 world 100 rankings. This is a huge plus uh, people because to be in the under 18 world 100 ranking, the top 100 in the world, uh, it's amazing. And we, we have five swimmers currently in that uh, as per the 2019 rankings. More so, uh, we have a, about 40 swimmers, men and boys and girls under 17 group, uh, basically group one and group two, uh, who uh, on the 2000 national timings uh, have swum uh, times which are faster than 4A plus motivational times of the USA junior age groups. Uh, we will talk about this later, but this is also a good uh, development. We see swimmers, uh, junior swimmers getting faster. I don't have the previous year's uh, records and uh, it can be compiled, but that is not too relevant. What is important is in 2019, we have a group of 40 swimmers who we can work with, who are going, moving towards 2024 and 2028. Opportunities are uh, many uh, because of uh, shortage of time. I will not dwell on this box because certainly we'll be covering this uh, in the slides as we move ahead. What we must realize is that uh, currently we are enjoying a, a unique window of opportunity. And since the last three years or two years, uh, the government has put an extremely high focus on the 2020 Olympics and they continue to put focus and emphasize on uh, 2024 and twenty. Our Honorable Sports Minister had also previously announced, and even when he came into our one of our sessions, uh, that he would like to see India to be in the top 10 medal tally at the Olympics. Uh, now, that is not going to be possible without swimming. So, it's, we carry a huge burden. At the same time, this is a window of opportunity. 2020 and 2028, the next two Olympic cycles, if we deliver if deliver some good performances 
and uh, at the Asian Games, at the Olympics and the subsequent Olympics. Uh, this will be a huge plus moving forward because then we'll get the attention of the government, we'll get the respect of the government, we'll get the money that the other sports are getting from the government and from various other uh, sources, including CSRs and uh, sponsors, etc. A sport has to be successful to bring in sponsors and therefore we cannot afford to lose this opportunity. So some of the projects that we would as part of the strategy, be initiating. In fact, uh, had this COVID uh, not come into play and the lockdowns uh, not being a hurdle, uh, uh, some of these would have already been rolled out. But uh, I'll take them one by one. Uh, first and foremost is a national database of swimmers, coaches, and academies. You may ask, why do we need that? Basically, uh, a national database is going to tell us where our talent is in terms of swimmers, coaches, what their levels are, what are their skill sets, and uh, where are the academies. It will help us plan various programs, various strategies, focusing on uh, the skill levels and the community size. Uh, uh, so we need to know uh, and map where our community is. And this would be a phased out process, but the first level we would do the swimmer registration, the coach registration, and the uh, not very far behind would be integration with the meat management system. We recognize that not all state meets are conducted with electronic, and we would try to see that if uh, the state units are able to do it, we would prefer that uh, all. Uh, state selection meets or state uh, junior senior nationals are done as uh, championships are done with uh, the electronic timing so that we can integrate the timing database. Eventually, this is helpful for long term athlete development, for elite athlete management, and tracking where our swimmers are going, where is the talent sitting, and what we should do about it. So as I already mentioned, uh, some of the advantages, but uh, this would mean that there would be a single player ID from district state to national meets throughout the player, player's career. And integration with meet results will help in having a searchable database of players performance tracking, which is extremely useful for uh, talent identification for individual swimmers uh, to track uh, their competition, their, their own performance, the coaches, etc. This is done by every developed uh, swimming nation, and we cannot be left out of this. Uh, and we should have a central database along with the performance uh, tracking mechanism. Along with that, the next step would be, uh, and not next step, because a lot of this would be uh, working parallelly and in uh, synchronous, systematic talent scouting and development plan. So what does that mean? Uh, we've defined that we need to have identification criteria. And these would be, these are, have already been uh, framed and are in work in process uh, in consultation with some of our top and senior coaches. So the identification criteria would uh, create the matrix for talent identification in the junior groups. Uh, then we need to create a training environment for this uh, identified talent. This can happen. We recognize that a lot of talented swimmers cannot move away from home. They cannot move into academies. Parents may not be able to afford. They may be working parents. Uh, junior children cannot uh, leave home on their own. So the idea would be once the talent has been identified, we would have senior and top coaches to clinics uh, with the coaches who uh, are training this talent. At the same time, we would have senior coaches visiting these academies where these athletes are training, talking to their parents, talking to their uh, coach, and uh, tracking uh, their pro progression, monitoring their progression. And uh, how that will be done uh, will all be discussed at the appropriate time, and a bit of it will be also discussed here. And at the same time, when uh, there is a uh, uh, with performance uh, tracking comes uh, weeding out. 
because it may be so that an athlete, though identified as a potential talent uh, at a particular point in time, for whatever reasons, does not progress as we expect uh, uh, that they should progress to hit the milestones uh, as they move up the age group. So uh, there will be a matrix for weeding out because government monies and the federation monies and public monies have to be spent uh, judiciously on uh, with a, a investment uh, reward kind of a decision matrix. And uh, therefore, uh, a weeding out matrix will be applicable to see where our talent is going. And if over a period of few years, if the talent is not progressing, uh, then uh, we need, need to review uh, as to why that is happening and move forward. Uh, talking a bit about uh, the talent identification matrix. So uh, once again, in consultation with uh, our senior coaches and some uh, talent uh, identification experts, uh, sports science experts, we have kind of uh, uh, decided the stages uh, through which a child moves towards an being an elite athlete. And as has been explained in our sports science sessions and by other speakers, uh, there is a pre-puberty and a post-puberty uh, stage of development of a, an athlete or a swimmer. And uh, the various factors or uh, protocols would be designed for uh, looking at talent. Uh, each, at each stage, it will be differing. And as you can see, that there will be uh, talent identification along uh, the efficiency in the water, dry land, Anthropometric, which is basically the science of uh, the human body's growth, the genetics, uh, psychometric, uh, which is uh, the psychological profiling uh, about the athlete, his mental conditions, his commitments, his work ethic, and of course, race performances. Race performances are the final marker, having everything, but if your performances are not at uh, par with what it should be at that age, then there is a uh, a concern. So as you can see, the A1, A2, or B1, B2, etc. in this matrix would be specific protocols for that uh, box in this matrix. This is the mechanism for uh, identifying the uh, talent at various stages. And how would we go about scouting? So the scouting opportunities uh, currently at uh, uh, due to lack of uh, number of competitions in uh, India, uh, have to be more creative. We would uh, have designated scouts per zone with an aptitude to, as the speak, earlier speakers and coaches have talked about, the coach's eye. So we would identify coaches who have a good eye and have a good understanding of the various elements of the decision matrix for talent identification. And they would eventually travel to various academies in their zones. So there are clubs and academies and kids do train uh, there are learn to swim programs. So early talent identification age has been specified. Similarly, the pre-puberty, post-puberty ages have been specified. The talent scouts would need to travel to the various academies. They would certainly need to travel to the state meets and the state trials because not all children reach the nationals, but still there could be a hidden talent and that needs to be spotted. Once a talent has been identified, uh, the idea is to monitor the talent, mentor the coach concerned by uh, mentoring by a senior coach or a national coach to ensure that the development and the training program of that particular child is on track and that we continue to see improved performances uh, from that identified talent. Uh, one more very, very important and uh, uh, critical element of the strategy is uh, indigenous coaches education and certification pathway. Currently, uh, there are a couple of centers in India where coaches could go and uh, go online and get their ASCA certification. There is also the NIS diploma, which is offered by the government. Uh, but there is no comprehensive uh, education and certification pathway. And has been, as has been discussed earlier, uh, there, are, there is a difference between getting a certificate and getting education. Acquiring knowledge is a continuous activity. Uh, 
I think it was Chris Martin who mentioned uh, continuous uh, develop personal development. Uh, so besides certification, continuous knowledge upgradation and upskilling is also necessary. And it's a, you have to stay updated as to what is happening, but that does not dilute the need for a, props for a, a comprehensive certification pathway. I've been noticing the chats in the various sessions and there are many, many coaches who are say, uh, suggesting and they are correct when they say that there should be a, a, a uniform certification by the Swimming Federation of India and uh, it should uh, be more holistic, taking into account the actual skill level of the coach and only then can we decide as to what further education that coach needs unless and until we empower our coaches with education at the middle and the bottom of the pyramid, we are not going to get anywhere because we cannot in a country of 1 billion people expect that uh, a few coaches can produce uh, results for the whole country. So the coaches development program would basically start with bringing on board coaches through the registration process for the coaches, as I mentioned earlier, uh, centralized database of coaches, um, including information about what their current level of certification is, what are the type of swimmers that they have produced, what are the type of swimmers they are currently training, and uh, a little more uh, deeper dive into exactly what is their profile, uh, after which uh, uh, so that is the review and skills of skills and certification. After that, we would uh, decide their development needs and uh, the development needs would be uh, specific for one group would be different. Another group could be different. Uh, maybe language skills uh, are an issue and we need to address that as well. So uh, in order to have a holistic development of coaches, it's a continuous and a well thought out plan. Hopefully we will be able to roll this out very soon. This also involves a uh, review of performance because unless and until you review performance at a particular level after having gone through the education at that level, uh, moving to the next level can only happen after the review. And this review would be through a panel of peer coaches who have uh, experience in doing this kind of uh, evaluation. The salient points of the coaches education and development pathway uh, have uh, amongst other things that I mentioned opportunities for continuous learning and upskilling through online learning tools. There are extremely valuable seminars uh, conducted not only in this lockdown period, but they continue to happen. Some of them are paid. So they will create an opportunities through the uh, membership data uh, and through the level of the coaches knowledge that we have have uh, targeted learning for upskilling through online tools and also mentoring opportunities. Many of our senior coaches have a lot to offer. If a junior coach is in a position to be on deck with them for a couple of months in a year, maybe during off season, maybe during early season, there is an amazing amount of uh, opportunity and sharing that this senior coaches through their years of experience have a lot to give to the community. And I'm sure they will uh, partner with the SFI to come forward and agree to this mentoring program uh, for uh, junior coaches, giving them an opportunity to be on deck with uh, them. Uh, we would also be inviting top international strength conditioning technique, biomechanics, sport nutrition experts on webinars. Now this would be, all these would be open only to uh, coaches who are registered with the Swimming Federation of India. And uh, therefore we know as to what is their level of cert certification, what is their skill level. And and we can recommend the webinars to those kind of uh, the, the level of that particular coach. I mean, every coach, if they listen to Bob Bowman speaking, not necessarily going to take away something from that because his level of understanding is not of that level. But that does not mean that at a junior level, a coach should not learn. So uh, different webinars for different peoples, uh, people or different level of coaches is what we are looking at. And uh, another big advantage is that uh, smaller programs or junior coaches cannot afford to have this kind of sports science backup for their academies. Very few academies can actually have, unless they are corporate supported or uh, otherwise, uh, can have a complete uh, 
plethora of all the sports sciences uh, as a backup. So the coach needs to learn something about this uh, other uh, important elements and components of uh, the athlete's training uh, besides his uh, swim training. And this kind of webinars can give them a little more opportunity to learn about the other areas of uh, training the athletes and developing athletes. Sir, uh, a request from uh, Virendra Nanavati, sir, if it can be slightly louder, uh, your voice is... Okay, okay. Uh, just tell me, Partha, if this is okay or not. Much better. Fine? much better, much better. Okay. Some of the other initiatives that we have started or are about to start would be uh, the as of uh, 2019, we have started as SFI has started recognition of coaches at the national championships, the junior and senior nationals. Coaches whose uh, swimmers break a national record uh, are recognized and felicitated at the championship. In above that, Cash awards to each for each national record to the swimmers coach at junior and senior nationals. Please note this is not for sub junior, but junior and senior nationals. Uh, we would also be looking at uh, from 2021 onwards, a coach of the year award, the criteria for which would be uh, published uh, in due course. And we would also be rolling out a recognition of clubs and academies, rankings of clubs and academies based on total FINA points of their swimmers at the national uh, interclub championship or uh, the exact uh, mechanism will be uh, published and announced. But these are moves uh, that are aimed towards uh, bringing the community closer uh, and recognizing the efforts of the coaches, motivating them to uh, upskill themselves, to learn more, eventually benefiting the swimmers. Uh, the, because for us, all of us, the reason of our existence, reason of our being here and sitting in this chair is the swimmer. Some things on the competition structure as part of the strategy. Uh, enough has been said about the lack of competition. Uh, some of the ideas that the Swimming Federation of India has been uh, uh, planning for the year 2000, uh, 2020 so now uh, this would uh, obviously not be able to be uh, implemented, but certainly looking at what the situation will evolve and how it evolves post-COVID, uh, this is in our minds. And we wish to introduce the national score, short course competition. Uh, short course uh, is an extremely uh, important uh, format of racing in as much as uh, it provides our swimmers uh, with a much needed uh, focus on turns and starts. Uh, short course competition requires uh, the starts and turns to be uh, extremely good and which is also helpful when it comes to the long course format. So that is one of the reasons why we wish that uh, we have a short course uh, competition. Moreover, it provides the much needed variation to our swimmers in the racing uh, season as well as it's a very attractive and fast sport, so it can have a higher visibility in terms of uh, uh, favor from the media, etc. We also recognize the fact that uh, not a lot of our swimmers reach the nationals. That doesn't mean they're not good. Uh, in states like Maharashtra, Karnataka, and some others, the competition at the state level is so high that uh, due to the only 2% uh, rule per event, uh, the best two from that particular state reach the nationals. And the others, though they may be faster than swimmers from other states, are un unable to reach the nationals. And this can happen over uh, a couple of years, which would eventually demotivate that particular athlete who is definitely a good swimmer, but because somebody is better than him in that, in that respective state, is unable to reach the nationals. And that could be one of the reasons for a dropout. Uh, at the All India Ranking Meet, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, having either uh, as many swimmers for, from the state provided they meet the cutoff times. And uh, this would be under 18 and open category rankings. So uh, basically, it would not limit swimmers to reach the nationals. They can, if they make the cutoffs, they can go to the nationals and compete in the All India Ranking Meet. 
this would also be useful for us to decide uh, and once again identify talent and know how they are progressing. Uh, we would also like to do invitation meets with select uh, Asian national federations to provide exposure to larger number of swimmers in our country. Uh, even the government is uh, focusing on hosting more international meets within India rather than having uh, our swimmers uh, to travel out for foreign exposure. Of course, uh, that will be continue and that will is much needed, but we can certainly host more meets uh, where we have foreign countries being uh, invitational meets coming to participate in India. We also wish that our, uh, we work with our uh, state units and the clubs within those states to introduce uh, the culture of non-medalist meets and the, in the uh, junior groups, the under 17 groups. Because uh, in that group, what is more important is that the kid enjoys uh, racing and does not need to feel the pressure of uh, the parental pressure, the coach pressure, the peer group pressure of winning and losing. Uh, there, there will be ample time to learn how to lose and how, learn how to win as they grow older. But in the younger age, they need to enjoy the racing in, uh, without these kind of pressures. And we hope that our uh, state, we will work with our state units to introduce non-medalist meets uh, uh, in the swimming season. Partha, is the sound okay? Uh, much better, sir. Much better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, the last element of the uh, strategy is basically the uh, athlete development pathway. As you know, uh, everybody knows that there is a Kelo India and there's a TOPS and uh, various schemes of the government, but probably a lot of people, the junior coaches do not have too much uh, knowledge on how that operates. Uh, so let me inform you, basically the school club level programs at various states are your feeder centers. And uh, from these uh, performances uh, at the uh, SFI Nationals, the school game Nationals, uh, eventually the selection for the Kelo India Challenge is done. The athlete uh, selected by a set of panel of coaches and experts, uh, if selected, gets financial assistance. But not only that, now the move is towards uh, creating more and more Kelo India accredited academies. Uh, the SFI has also written to Sai a very detailed paper on why children do not join the Kelo India academies. And there can be many, many reasons. We do not have the time to go into all of them. But the basic idea is that if there is a good Kelo India accredited academy within uh, e the swimmer's own state, it is easier for the parent, easier for the child to not compromise education, not compromise uh, uh, family uh, linkages and yet be part of a good training program. So the currently we have six uh, academies across the country, but the idea would be to have at least one Kelo India Academy in each and every state. For this, we uh, uh, encourage our state units to come forward uh, to identify the best academy within their state and work with the Swimming Federation of India to get these academies accredited uh, by SAI so that uh, we have more and more KIA academies uh, operating in each and every state. Uh, the level of coaching, et cetera, would be better monitored and uh, the coach education would be targeted at the coaches in the Kelo India Academy. So overall development of the athlete would be more focused. Uh, there would be, there are currently uh, one national center of excellence and one more is proposed. So basically we have uh, uh, two uh, national centers of excellence in the current scheme of things, uh, which is basically Delhi and Bangalore. And we would uh, hope and encourage that SAI would uh, uh, open two more in the east and the west zones uh, in the coming years. Basically, these uh, zonal uh, national centers of excellence would be high-end academies where one of them would be almost like a, uh, a full-fledged Olympic training center. And these would be targeted at uh, the high-performance group and the top athletes, uh, which I will explain what uh, these mean. 
So as you can see, some of uh, the six that are the operational universities and some that have already been proposed uh, and uh, awaiting approval from SAI. I would like to mention that uh, uh, this big, big clarification from SAI, but I recently read a notification which says that uh, national medalists and sportspersons of uh, eminence uh, are being supported by the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports to uh, start a Kelo India accredited academy for which they are offering financial assistance as a one-time support as well as a, every year there is a amount which is specified. More details on that scheme can be made available. If anybody is uh, interested, they can uh, contact the SFI or SAI and we will be happy to clarify. Uh, use of technology uh, in today's times is imperative. Sports science is a must to develop the athletes to the topmost levels and uh, investment in high performance resources, be it in technology or manpower is a must. And that, these are the kind of things that uh, are currently under consideration and will be implemented very soon for uh, the National Centers of Excellence. Uh, here we have a video of a, a particular piece of technology that would enable the, it's a wearable device like a sports Fitbit, a swimming Fitbit, and it will help the coach and the swimmer very, very valuable information on the workout sets. Of course, it's not permitted to wear this in the races, but in practice and in time trials, this is something Thing which can be of tremendous use in terms of providing feedback as to how the swimmer is progressing through his uh, daily workouts. The device is worn by the swimmer under the cap or over the cap and we have Bluetooth technology. It is constantly giving the coach uh, feedback as to his uh, stroke rate, distance per stroke, stroke length, uh, that is a uh, distance per stroke, the underwater time, the reaction time, and all the valuable data uh, about a workout set and how the swimmer is uh, swimming during his workout. This allows the coach to review the session, workout sessions with the swimmers individually post the session and can uh, also help the coach monitor a large set of swimmer, number of swimmers uh, in the pool in various lanes and uh, which may not be possible through the naked eye. You've already seen in one of the sessions earlier by Ilya, uh, the quality of uh, technology available for biomechanics and uh, bio biomechanical analysis. Uh, the, and with support from uh, financial assistance from the ministry and SAI, uh, we are proposing that uh, this kind of equipment will be installed at uh, the national centers of excellence, uh, which are, uh, will almost like uh, the Olympic training center and it will uh, be operated by specialist uh, biomechanical uh, experts so that uh, uh, underwater footage analysis, uh, et cetera, the coaches have this kind of tools available to give feedback to the themselves and to the swimmers as to where they need to do uh, and what they need to do to improve. Once again, it's not just important to invest in uh, technology. Technology is useless without having the right kind of uh, manpower. So, uh, as I said, uh, the NCOEs uh, would be uh, headed by very senior coaches. Currently, the NCOE at Delhi is with, uh, the SPMC pool headed by Partha Majumdar. The second uh, at uh, CSC headed by Nihar Amin. And over, the, over and above that, we are working with the SAI to bring in uh, uh, the biomechanics consultant, uh, high performance coach, et cetera, so that we have the high performance uh, human resources uh, available for uh, an elite program and developing our uh, potential uh, Olympians of the future. Talking a bit about uh, uh, identification, uh, 
let me tell you there is uh, a plan to be extremely tra transparent identification of junior high probables and the way uh, this was structured was that the 2019 SFI national finalists were taken as the base group uh, from the group one and group two boys group and girls uh, of that the medalists uh, were uh, filtered and the timings were uh, studied and analyzed and compared with the similar age uh, USA motivational timings. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, every year uh, USA Swimming publishes motivational timings for various age groups and these timings fall from, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, B, B to, and progress towards 4A, which is the highest or fastest times. These are times which are a reference point for uh, indexing where uh, a swimmer is and how he's progressing across uh, as he grows older. Uh, these are these timings are being used as benchmark times and we are mapping our nationalists and national medalists against this motivational times for their respective age categories and uh, identifying people who are swimming at the top which is the quad four times and faster amongst that we are also looking at how many of them are who is uh, falling within the top 100 uh, position or below 100 position as per the USA junior ranking. And as I mentioned in the first earlier slide, there are 40 odd plus uh, swimmers currently from group one, group two, who fall in this high probable and high performance group. And uh, we would have more targeted training happening with their coaches and with them. Moreover, uh, an extremely detailed exercise has been done uh, in association with uh, tops uh, vertical of this uh, sports authority of india and uh, a performance based criteria supported by sports science uh, data uh, and benchmarking to the top uh, age specific international performances is being used for selection under the top scheme so the criteria for selection under the top scheme for uh, 2024 or 2028 and uh, talent identification and progression monitoring is a very detailed and more uh, structured exercise uh, for selection for the academies and as high performance group uh, and the high probable group, uh, we would more or less follow the motivational times and track our speed swimmers accordingly. Uh, this slide is uh, not really uh, something that I would like to explain, but what I'm trying to project here is that an athlete's and a sp sports ecosystem is very, very large. And it comprises of the schools, the friends, the peer groups, the families, the community, and for the athlete, the personal recognition awards, the kind of opportunities available, the competitive platforms, media attention, all that build into a uh, creation of talent, which will eventually be your national sports talent repository or your talent pool. And we can work on these to create uh, icons for uh, our nation. Uh, it is imperative to say that any strategy that uh, does not address the needs of all the key stakeholders, the key is the operative word, it need not address the needs of all stakeholders but at least it should take into account the needs of the key stakeholders uh, unless until we do that, it's a very low probability of success. So we are conscious to that fact and uh, the strategy as it evolves and it is implemented will certainly keep this in mind. A quick summary of the strategy section. Uh, basically, this outlines the strategy section, which is the coach development, the sports science and sports medicine focus, uh, investment analysis is basically uh, uh, the best possible reward for every rupee spent by the government or our sponsors or the federation, uh, providing an effective pathway for development, both for coaches as well as swimmers with uh, best practices and the best resources available and uh, a high performance environment to facilitate uh, our high performance and uh, upcoming athletes to achieve their goals in the future. Uh, so that uh, more or less uh, sums up the strategy uh, and I, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monal sir, for a wonderful presentation.
and sharing all the detailed fact and uh, future projection for swimming federation of india and also sai uh, i hope in uh, this my voice was yeah. so bad to you know miss out uh, but uh, i tried to the later part up i tried to address the sound issue right in this in the no it was it was clear later sir so in this occasion i like to invite our national coach mr as pradeep kumar uh, for the question and answer series pradeep sir good morning how are you pradeep how are you pradeep just looking for some questions okay hmm. so i will start with the first question in the meanwhile pradeep sir will bring some questions in uh, so it's a question that when we talk about uh, swimming being a glamorous sport Uh, and uh, recently we have seen that international swimming league isl have been a great success in a uh, lot of arenas so uh, does sfi plan to promote swimming in uh, such manner or they intend to do in future no certainly uh, the league uh, format has been uh, in our minds for uh, a year now ever since uh, i have taken over in this uh, responsibility given to me we have discussed it at the sfi level we have discussed it with some stakeholders who have come forward to uh, initiate this uh, kind of leagues uh, a league for water polo has also been talked about and a league for swimming has also been talked about of course uh, uh, 2020 uh, as a year has been a washout because uh, uh, a better part of the year we will go Hello. Uh, dealing with COVID pool, etc., etc. But certainly, uh, a league is something that is in our mind, and we would like to uh, consider that in the near future. There is a question by Binod Kumar, and it has been seen that in lot of states, uh, and it has been a realistic question actually in lot of states. many talented uh, swimmer doesn't have the money to go to a swimming pool so they end up training in a pond or in a river or in those places where the facilities are very limited uh, is there any strategy uh, to be taken by sfi to uh, focus on that area you are true there are people who uh, probably are not fortunate enough and uh, cannot afford to go to uh, facilities but i'm assuming that uh, if they are training in a pool or a pond uh, the fact that they are training means that they would uh, participate at the district level uh, competitions uh, as i mentioned the talent scouts uh, so what we envisage is the talent scout traveling to various uh, clubs and academies and not only that traveling to the state meets so if the kid is talented i am sure the kid will uh, certainly move from the district to the state competition at least may not be the nationals so the talent scout's job will be to identify such talent and uh, in case uh, we find uh, or uh, the the panel that decides on talent identification decide uh, finds that this uh, talent is suitable and worth uh, supporting there is ample schemes under khelo india and such swimmers can be brought into the khelo india academies uh, for training okay sir thank you and uh, before i pass the uh, question to pradeep sir uh, my last query and it is being uh, a question by lot of coaches though not very relevant to today's topic so is there any plan for state or national in this year when um, during corona virus so i know uh, it's not relevant to this but no, there are no, a lot of coaches would love is, to uh, it is relevant this in the through, sense huh? that it has been asked in the chats in the previous sessions also correct correct uh, let, let me address this and uh, say that uh, sai and swimming federation of uh, india are currently as we talk uh, looking at creating sops and for, for opening of pools post the lockdown so obviously we have to recognize that uh, each state and depending on the districts uh, within the state which are in the red green or the orange zone will formulate its own policy related to relaxations which will be announced uh, in a very staged manner so we are currently completely unsure as to when the pools will reopen for uh, athletes to come back to training within that also a lot of our pools uh, operate as public pools where uh, apart from athletes who are training there are pub 
public uh, baths and public who come from leisure swimming also. So the concerned facility will also have to keep that in mind. Uh, there has been a question that was asked by some parents that uh, we will not get enough time to uh, prepare our children in this year. So let me assure you that the ample time, if at all the championships will be held in this year, and if there is a window of opportunity to hold the championship in this year, it will be only if the swimmers from all states have been able to get back to the pool and uh, the facilities are open where they could have trained for the required number of period for the state units to hold their selection trials and then uh, send swimmers to the nationals. So it, we are unsure and I cannot give a committed timeline whether or not we will hold the championship, but this is how we will approach it. And let us wait and see as to when uh, we can expect the pools uh, and the swimmers getting back to the pools. And it's only then we'll be able to uh, give a more clear answer. Thank you, Manoj. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, all yours. Okay, I have a question coming from one of the Jyodhirmai what is your call on federations call on all those deep associations who is not functioning rather than functioning it is hindering the development of talented swimmers and talented coaches in their concerned association states so what's your take on that can you repeat that no there are associations that's what it means there are association which is not functioning uh, properly and rather than it probably hinder the development of swimming and talented swimmers and coaches in the concerned state if there is something like that what's your call on what's your take well let me say that uh, sfi uh, moving forward will proactively work with each and every state unit to uh, look at uh, the progress of the sport within that particular state uh, if, if at all, uh, due to problems within the state unit uh, uh, and uh, other administrative political issues within a state unit, SFI and historically in the past has taken very uh, uh, appropriate actions uh, to ensure that the sport and the swimmers do not suffer. More part particularly related to swimmers uh, suffering uh, since uh, the uh, the entire process of talent identification, uh, the registration of swimmers, the registration of coaches and academies is an activity which will be the centralized database, of course, uh, in partner partnership with the respective state units who are also uh, important elements of our ecosystem. And therefore, they will have to uh, play a very important role. Uh, wherever we find that any state unit is not... Uh, uh, functioning up to the expectations, uh, we will sit with the concerned office bearers and address those issues and uh, appropriate actions may be taken if uh, that problem persists. Okay, thank you. And the one question which comes is when USA has 1000 plus uh, swimmers qualifying for A qualifying timings, what do you think is uh, not working in India or in inefficient in India to produce even one A qualifier? Well, my first two slides kind of answered that question. A lot of things, uh, uh, and uh, I would not like to dwell on what is not working. I would like to dwell on what can work and what we should uh, do to make uh, more and more swimmers uh, uh, reach the A qualification and not just the A qualification, reach the semifinals and finals and hopefully the podium at the World Arena. So uh, if, if in a 40 year span, uh, what is working and what is not working, in my opinion, is a counterproductive exercise. There is no time for uh, wasting uh, on retrospecting on what is not working. But we are sure that this strategy that we are planning will have uh, tremendous efforts if we can get the cooperation of each and every stakeholder. It is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that statement of Albert Einstein was modified to say we. We include the word we because it is all of us who can make it work. So if it has not worked in the past, uh, it could be because of a lot of people, a lot of reasons, 
no one person is responsible for the success or failure of anything, especially not sport. Yeah. So, uh, keeping our uh, previous speakers and long-term athlete development program in mind, um, will there be any change or addition of event in sub-junior nationals? Can you repeat that? Keeping the long-term athlete development program in mind, and as per our previous speaker said, so uh, do you think there will be any change of event or addition of event in sub-junior nationals? No, we certainly need to review the sub-junior events. Uh, it has been discussed uh, earlier as well as in these sessions and even by noted experts uh, from um, the like Chris Martin and other long-term development, athlete development experts. Uh, the recent change to the age group uh, was to, because of the 10th Asian age group, the, the age categories for that uh, event uh, required that we realign our national uh, age group, age group for the national, uh, align that with the uh, age groups for the 10th Asian uh, age group championship because uh, our nationals were the selection uh, uh, events for that uh, selection of the Indian team for the 10th Asian age group. Having said that, uh, in the long-term athlete development sense, uh, we need to look at the kind of events uh, that our group four and group three swim, how we structure the group four and group three. There have been discussions, very serious discussions on this topic of Group 4 uh, at the national championships uh, by the SFI executive committee in the past amongst the state units. Uh, we have to discuss this matter very much in detail with all the state units and stakeholders, including uh, coaches, before uh, any changes are suggested in a very ad hoc manner. Any changes uh, would have to be keeping the long-term goals in mind, and we will certainly work on that. So, uh, coming to long-term uh, uh, development program, so do you think we will, uh, SFI will come up with some structure coaches certification program, uh, which includes many aspect of coaching, like physiology, sports science, you know. Um, so, do you think SFI will come back with a structured program for coaches in future? Any, any uh, feedback in this regard, sir? Yes, certainly it will come back. It is not... Uh, as I said, uh, you can like, you know, taking a quote from the, one of the films in Hindi, uh, this particular session, we can say, ye trailer hai, picture abhi baki hai. <laughs> Nicely said, very nicely said. Pradeep sir, would like to highlight the question. Christian, uh, this is a very important question even I thought of. Uh, this is from Vinay Marathe, uh, one of the senior coaches from Pune. Um, see, we have the very, very important uh, area or the competition is Pradeep, the voice. Pradeep, uh, sorry to interrupt, but your voice is cracking. Is that? Uh, can't you hear me? I can't hear you. Yeah, uh, now it's fine. Okay. There can you one, repeat? One of the very important competitions in India is the All India Inter University competitions. And uh, it's been conducted in places such as there are a lot of manipulations happening. And, uh, and how can, why can't SFI? Think about taking it over and conduct the international uh, inter-university competitions in discussion with the uh, uh, All India Inter-University Board. It's a question is from Vinay. Uh, yeah, I know, I know uh, Vinay Marathe, and uh, yeah, that's a good question. And uh, uh, let me tell you that this uh, last year, in, of course, inter-university meets I am told are always uh, some kind of a sham. And there is always some controversy surrounding the inter-university championships, uh, All India Inter-University Championships. But this particular last one was uh, 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 a feather in that uh, cap. You know, it, it, it just took the cake. So uh, uh, fortunately, because of social media in these times, a lot of swimmers, uh, our, some of our prominent swimmers, took to uh, protesting at that event. And it came to the public attention instantly. And uh, it was also uh, taken Hello? Uh, off by the Minister of Sport. Uh, yeah, am I clear? Am I no, your sound is breaking a bit. 
Yeah, what I was saying is that uh, what happened at the last Inter University was extremely deplorable. Uh, though I'm told that uh, this uh, kind of things happen very frequently at the Inter University. Fortunately, in these times of social media and the current uh, dispensation, political dispensation, the minister is an extremely proactive person and immediate corrective actions were taken, but only after a lot of our prominent swimmers protested. Uh, at Swimming Federation of India also, we got in touch with uh, the DG uh, when we heard about this. DG intervened and uh, issued orders uh, to in immediately rectify the results. And uh, at the moment, uh, after that incident, uh, the DG has assured uh, the Swimming Federation that the Inter-University Championships uh, conduct will be uh, handed over to the uh, Federation so that uh, the events are conducted in a free and fair manner. So hopefully, uh, uh, of course, the decision is rest with the All India University Board, but Sports Authority of India will prevail upon them to ensure that the conduct of the event is given to uh, either the Federation or a neutral uh, party. In more, most likelihood, it will be the Federation. One more question is, uh, uh, can SFA develop a feedback mechanism where you can receive uh, complaints or suggestions and on the ongoing basis? Uh, yes, uh, certainly. Uh, as, uh, as we complete the registration process, uh, the, uh, the revised uh, website would have a login section where uh, swimmers and coaches will be able to uh, log in and access uh, certain resources which are not uh, available to the general visitors to the website. And uh, I'm sure uh, that uh, within that, there will be the uh, possibility of uh, putting in suggestions, complaints, grievances, etc. as a registered swimmer Thank you. or coach. There's been a request. Uh, I'll just modify that uh, question a bit that uh, can there be a registration process for the grassroots level of coaches also, as we are talking about coaches registration? The registration process will be for everybody. Anybody who is a practicing coach or a swimmer uh, competing at the district level will mandatorily have to be registered and uh, even uh, like, for example, coaches who come to the nationals, uh, you know, they crowd the deck, for example, and uh, there'll be a lot more controls on uh, who should be allowed on deck. And unless and until you registered coach with the federation and you have a swimmer who's going to be swimming a race, uh, you cannot, uh, you know, create clutter on the deck and uh, disturb a meet. So, yes, everybody, to answer that question, a registration will be for everybody. Thank you for answering that, sir. Uh, for this, sir. Yeah, one or two question on the same level, but exactly uh, not. But the meaning is the same. It says uh, already there are senior coaches who have been supported and giving everything on their prime level. Why not uh, you think about the base level coaches who are working on it? National records you are already paying or you are encouraging the uh, national record holders, coaches. But uh, the basic work has been done by other coaches on the base level. What is their support and motivation? That's a question uh, asked by more than two, three coaches. I somehow uh, am unable to comprehend the question from the kind of answer that the coach who's asking it is expecting. So, uh, as I said, uh, a junior coach could certainly produce a national record. There's no reason why a junior coach or a coach who is not currently known as a senior coach or a prominent coach a national record. So, so the idea of recognizing a coach with a national record is completely coming from a different angle. And uh, it has no uh, bearing on uh, recognizing or uh, doing something for junior coaches. The fact that we are looking at a very serious upskilling program for junior coaches and the entire coaches spectrum at different levels and the fact that we are wanting to uh, 
upskill them so that they can produce better swimmers uh, is a, a big step in the direction of uh, recognizing the efforts of the junior coaches and helping them do the job better. Uh, but if the coach is expecting an answer in terms of financial reward, I'm sure the coaches uh, uh, understand that that is not a feasible activity uh, for that. Uh, the fact that the wow. ministry is supporting uh, and uh, through the Kalo India scheme. So if you have uh, five swimmers in a Kalo India scheme, each swimmer is getting five lakh rupees. Out of that five lakh rupees, a lakh of rupees is going to the coaches. So if you if you it's always a result and reward mechanism in life, and there are no free lunches. Yeah, I think uh, adding to that, I should say that uh, promoting the junior coaches should be at the club level or at the state level, and also the rewards which has been received by the coaches. It is up to the senior coaches to share those rewards and honors with the junior coaches in their. Uh, on their own uh, system. That's what I think to motivate the junior coaches, that's what I feel. I agree. Un unfortunately, I lost that question. The No, I was adding to your answer. Voice was cracking. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I think you are... I, I am losing the... Yeah, you are something wrong with my uh, yes, net yes. connection, maybe. No, to adding to your answer, I was just telling, sharing the honor to the junior coaches uh, should be a, uh, should be one area where the junior coaches can be happy. The second thing is working on the junior coaches, supporting them should be the, uh, honoring them should be the uh, duty of or responsibility of the concerned clubs or centers wherever they are working and also their state association. When it comes to the national records and national uh, honors, generally get through the persons who are training them at that level. So even though the senior coaches receive the honors through the national records or uh, financial assistance, I think uh, the senior coaches can decide to share that honors with the, their junior coaches at their own respective levels. Within, yeah. within their clubs and their yeah. respective levels. Moreover, I believe that a lot of uh, the state units do recognize uh, the coaches uh, where the swimmers have brought medals to the state. Yeah. Right. I One see a the... question from uh, Gokul Kamat uh, on uh, the approximate yes. timeline for implementing this strategy. And yeah, uh, so let me tell you that uh, the uh, and swimmer registration. Uh, was ready for rollout and uh, will be rolled out very shortly uh, within this year itself. And similarly, the coach, um, all of the initiatives declared uh, in this uh, strategic uh, elements uh, would be rolled out uh, within 2020 and 2021. Right. A lot of question on the SGFI competition where there are no communication between the states and the coaches and uh, clashing with the exams and a lot of questions on that. There is no coordination. What can Federation do to coordinate that uh, uh, SGFI competitions? That's uh, difficult to answer because uh, the Swimming Federation of India has no control over SUSI. It's a different federation by itself. It's a School Games Federation of India. Uh, and, uh, the Sports Authority and the Ministry of Sports has de-recognized uh, the sports, schools games, well, SGFI, the School Games Federation of India, due to some anomalies which happened during one of the international events. Uh, I'm not aware of the latest status on that, but uh, it depends on the state unit which is hosting the SGFI nationals and whether they uh, they invite the federation to conduct and host uh, conduct the uh, events. So, but it's an entirely uh, the prerogative of the state unit which is hosting the nationals and the events under SGFI and uh, SFI as SFI we have no direct uh, say or control on what they do and do, or do not do. Certainly, we can uh, raise issues uh, 
uh, on some very important matter and sai has uh, some kind of a mandate over uh, sgfi to try and enforce uh, changes were required well, there is one question that i feel to ask and i think there are many coaches raised this question to me many times when we have from the group 3 level when you go to group 2 and group 1 suddenly from 200 freestyle it start 400 800 1500 events uh, all the coaches who are talking about uh, in this uh, conference most of them were talking about improving the base training at the at the uh, junior level so why not at the group 3 level we start that for at least 400 800 freestyle and you know then there is no sudden jump from the 200 to 1500 so why can't we think of probably reducing the sprint events and having one or two distance event added to the group 3 levels uh yes pradeep some of the uh, takeaways from the previous sessions are and what you are suggesting is one of them another has been uh, a more focus on uh, uh iem type of events and uh, uh, uh some events uh, which could also be uh, increase uh, efficiency and uh, so and so forth uh, you are aware that uh, so this post the uh, suggestion it has been discussed uh, uh, at the committee level also and we will when we formulate the uh, events for the uh, junior nationals uh, with in consideration moreover you are aware that uh, we have uh, brought together a panel of senior coaches and you have been uh, party to that you are party to that and you have sat in on couple of other meetings the last one at uh, bhopal so any such suggestions on events or uh, uh, changes that uh, affect the long term development or can influence the long term development of the athletes are welcome from the coaches to the senior coaches on the panel and through the say, panel to the sfi so that timely uh, decisions can be taken on uh, necessary changes not uh, not required that all suggestions may be implemented but certainly suggestions which are constructive which affect uh, the development of athletes in the longer term sense are beneficial for retain your swimmers in the sport etc are more than welcome and we will consider that this suggestion is actively under consideration we're talking uh, about uh, sorry and this is uh, for many coaches they are asking there are a lot of government pools and private pools at, uh, states why can't uh, federation work with the government to provide at least few hours of training time for competitive swimming that uh, is a good suggestion but very difficult to implement because uh, most of these public pools are under the local authorities be it the municipal corporation or the nagarpalika or whatever be that be but uh, uh, and that uh, state unit or the uh, district units uh, need to kind of uh, liaise with the state departments to allow this consciously what we would like to do is uh, have our state units engage with the state sports departments uh, uh, very actively and uh, try and see that uh, uh, schools are brought into uh, some kind of the, the physical ed- education component of the schools also includes swimming and uh, brings the uh, uh, children from various schools into learn to swim and uh, learn to train kind of programs uh, so if that exercise happens that will be one constructive and very big step forward but uh, making or liaisoning with the state or local authorities and to allow their pools to be used uh, by coaches individually or renting them out or leasing them out is a very individual and a very local exercise which at the national swimming federation does not have and we the train or carry it can for at because they have the local political influence and the local uh, context to be able to uh, 
influence the local uh, the authorities your voice is breaking but for the knowledge yeah did my answer come through uh, not really yeah. i mean i think you need to repeat it yeah what i said was that uh, individually coaches uh, renting or leasing or may having access to local uh, pools is a very very uh, local level issue and at the national level federation cannot uh, does not have the uh, jurisdiction or the bandwidth or the connect to be able to influence such decisions uh, let me say that uh, the sports authority of india has taken a very constructive step this year that all sai facilities any facility which is a sports authority of india facility can be used by any coach if he wishes to bring their uh, swimmers to uh, uh, that particular pool for training so they can have a lane or two lanes and book a time slot and use the facility uh, the circular for this has also been issued so that that is possible in the any sai facility similar arrangements could be done with the state sports departments the schools are under the state sport department and the state units can do something like this but uh, any facilities which are governed and run by uh, local municipal authorities or uh, such uh, authorities uh, is not possible to influence them from the sfi uh, sfi zone absolutely i think it is a correct answer probably uh, the concerned uh, coaches and the association should sit together and uh, the talk to the concerned swimming pool whether it is private or public and private is more difficult because it is all work on uh, you know profit basis but uh, government pools will definitely give but then it's a question of you go in convincing them the authorities yeah by uh, parta yeah this is a question by shopnil chikte and i can see few other coaches have the same kind of query also to summarize this question so to get more pool of talent in junior level can we have more than two participant from the state which is performing to uh, see the better opportunity for swimmers in national level so as i mentioned uh, in the competition structure the current uh, structure and rules for the national championships uh, cannot be altered but to address this problem that is exactly the reason why we are looking at the all india ranking uh, championship or, or meet which will essentially allow swim, more swimmers uh, to from any state to take part at the uh, ranking tournament the national ranking tournament thank you sir there's been a question by guru prashad and aditi can sfi provide a technology platform to publish state level meet result and um, for all the states of all the states of course there is a platform where few states results are being published but is it be compulsory for all the states see you uh, must have heard if you were paying attention that uh, in the database portion of our strategy creation of a database it does not just involve the registry for swimmers and uh, coaches and academies but it also involves integration with uh, the meets uh, meet results and meets so meet entries meet results would be integrated with uh, the new platform and uh, i also mentioned that we would wish that uh, at least all state championships or selection trials are done with electronic timing in that case it is it will be very very easy to uh, instantly uh, import uh, these results into the new database which will be a searchable database today what happens is that if you are looking at even the national results there are pages and pages of pdf files so if you want to look for one swimmer one event uh, you have to sift through uh, and you have to know the five or seven day schedule to even make that exercise uh, slightly more easier so uh, that's not the best way for looking at results if you see how it is done in developed countries uh, you can actually uh, and coaches who recruit for colleges go to uh, a database and they are very easily able to put in the name of the swimmer or the swimmer's id and you can see the last five years results what meets they have swum what were their performances this is actually the direction where we would like to go but for that we need the cooperation for everybody we need the state units to be able to 
uh, bear the cost of uh, having uh, electronic timing system uh, for those uh, state meets as well. Some states are doing it. I'm not saying not uh, they are not doing it. But unless and until all states do it, uh, it's difficult to import those results into a searchable database. So even if you were to put those uh, PDF files from state units or results on some uh, website, uh, that exercise is futile in un unless and until you can have, have a searchable database. And that's what we would like to see happening. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, we are Mr. going to take two more questions probably. Uh, yeah. Sir, you have, you have got uh, the coaches registry coming up soon. Can we have at the national registry? Can we have other uh, specialists also, like strength training, conditioning, coaches, nutritionists, sports psychologists? Can we have another registry of there also, as that we do for the coaches? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a suggestion that will uh, be kept in consideration and. Uh, but I would say it's not really a registry. These are resources and, and uh, uh, they may not uh, need to be directly registered, but they can be uh, impaneled as a separate list of people. I mean, it's not going, the numbers are not going to be massive in terms of swimmers and coaches, the numbers are massive. So what we call is a registry and you need a database and uh, you need to map and index uh, what is happening there. Uh, the sports science support uh, 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 services is would need to fall back on. So we can certainly have a uh, empanelment rather than a registry, uh, which are uh, resources where the swimmers or coaches or clubs can use uh, as their need, uh, as per their needs. Right. Does that sort yeah. of uh, answer that question, Pradeep? Yeah. Any question, Partha? I think uh, I didn't don't find any relevant question in this topic today. And things. we, I think we have to, uh, a lot of questions are there for sure. There is one question on the age verification. Uh, there are, uh, there is current age group swimming. There are current uh, medical tests, which is done uh, through government agencies, but then the, the range what is giving is about two to three years. 11 year or 12 year old when the range is given to two to three years and it can be 14 years, 15 years. But how that must can be sorted out because there, is a, there seems to be a lot of age group uh, forgery happening in the age group nationals. One question came from, I think. We, we have uh, observed this issue for Ever since I remember, I would think that uh, in these days, uh, probably the uh, such uh, cases of uh, age fraud are fewer. But uh, at the same time, we cannot say that there's uh, zero and we cannot ignore that. The, the uh, medical science available for age uh, uh, verification is uh, available, but uh, it's... Uh, it depends on the person who is uh, doing the age verification and uh, therefore, but I'm assuming that the central registry, the uh, one time uh, registry for swimmers pan India and a unique ID across district and upwards all meets, uh, which will stay with the swimmer throughout the career as long as the swimmer stays within the sport. Uh, would address a lot of these issues because backend verification at the time of uh, registration. Uh, will be uh, uh, spelled out and these issues will be kept in consideration as to ascertaining the correct age of the swimmer at the time of registration itself. And uh, reliance will be on documents which can be uh, more uh, depended upon than some doctor's certificate. Any question? I think uh, 
Yeah, I think we are also coming to the end of our time. So, do you think you can suggest any question, Pradeep sir? I think there are more than questions. There are a lot of suggestions coming in. You know. Yeah. I think. I think with that note, we can end our session today. Um, what do you feel? Yeah, I think the questions are done. Unless uh, uh, you you want to close it over, Mr. Uh, Partha can close it, but it, it, I just take the opportunity to thank you for coming on today to handle the questions and uh, uh, Partha for again uh, moderating. Uh, I even also thank everybody for uh, uh, their response to the entire series uh, uh, of uh, the online education uh, for swim coaches. Uh, we hope to bring more and more of such programs to help uh, add value to the work that you are doing uh, for our swimmers. And let's hope uh, the strategy that we are currently following will yield uh, considerable and positive results uh, and give us uh, something to be proud of in 2024 and 2028.